let's get into HDFS, which again will stand for Hadoop Fish. The architecture is something like this, guys. Let me first draw the architecture diagram. This guy would be the master, and there would be many slaves around it. Okay. Master is a colloquial term. In terms of Hadoop, we call it the name node. And slave again is a colloquial term, but in terms of Hadoop, we call it data node. Node. When I mean a node, I'm just pointing to a particular machine. Each machine is a node. This is a node, this is a node, this is a node, this is a node. So all these things are data nodes here because they are all slaves. And this guy is the master and he's called the name node. So if you are getting the terminology right, from now on I won't be using the term master or the slave, rather I'd be using the term name node and the data node. Now let me tell you how the whole stuff works. Let me put together the whole thing. Why is this called the name node? Name node. And why are these things called the data node? Everything is called data node. Even this is called data node, right? This. There will be only one name node and others are all called data nodes. <coughs> what is a data node? And what is the name node? Data node is the place where the data is actually stored. Okay, so these are the places where your data is actually stored. Hence the name data node. When a client sends me data to, for me to store it, he gives it to the name node. And what this guy basically does is that he sorts out which all data nodes are free and according to that he will push data to some of the data nodes. Okay, so the final place as to where the client's data rests is here. Hence the name data node. What's a name node then? Why is it called a name node? It's called a name node because it does not have any data, <laughs> it's simple, okay? This does not have any data at all. This guy is just the master. Then what does he do? He handles the namespace of the entire file system. Am I clear? He handles the namespace of the entire file system. What's the namespace, you might ask. Say, in Windows, you have this C drive. Right, so everything starts from C drive. But in Linux you do not have anything like a C drive or a D drive. Everything starts from the root. Okay. Root user Amura desktop. So this might be the part of my desktop. Now if in my same machine there is another user, say Sharma, then This desktop would be something like this. So all the directories inside the desktop would be like this. So this is a namespace, simple. Who handles all these things in HDFS? See, even HDFS would be having something like this, right? Even HDFS is a file system. So even it would be having directories, it would be having folders, it would be having files and so on and so forth. So who handles all these things? This it is the duty of the name not to handle all these things. Hence, it is called the name node. One more thing that we need to observe is that everything that is dealt, dealt in name node happens in memory. Meaning which everything happens at the RAM of the name node. So whatever metadata it has, whatever metadata, whatever namespacing it has, it does, it does it from the RAM. So make sure that when you deal with the data, uh, name node, you have lots of RAM that is available for it. Ideally, 8 GB RAM would do the same for you, but say you are having a huge cluster, 
then it's better to go for 16 GB or you know 32 GB or 64 GB or whatever RAM that you got based on your cluster size. Okay, so we are not bothered about main node's hard disk capacity because it does not store any data as such. It just stores certain files relating to these things. How to handle the namespace? Okay, it's fine if you do not have clarity about this because my objective is not to give you clarity right away. You will get to know a lot of stuff. This is one such thing. Just keep this concept in mind. Now let me draw the same diagram again. <clears throat> so this is Psi. The circle is Psi and we is the client. His task is to store his data into the HDFS file system. So this is the actual process guys. This guy gets in touch with the name node. The name node, uh, he asks the name node saying, boss I want to have you I want to sorry. Uh, I want to. I want to store 500 GB into your file system. So quickly, what the name node would do is that he would get in touch with Sai, saying that, "Okay, boss. This is the list of data nodes which are free. Okay, this is the list of data nodes which are free." Now Sai has the list of data nodes which the name node has given him so that now what this guy would do, Sai would do is that he would directly get in touch with the data node. Assume that this is one of the data nodes that the name node has given him. He would get in touch with this data node directly and then he would start dumping his data. Assume that the capacity of this data node is just 100 GB. Okay. Once this is nearing, once the capacity of 100 GB is nearing, immediately Sai would again send out a request saying that 100 GB is done, get me a new list, that is get me a new data node. Then again this would get a new data node. Sai would again get in touch with the second data node and he would again fill with 100 GB. This process will continue and Sai would com complete filling all this 500 GB into 100 GB each. One thing that we must note is that for Sai who is the client, he does not need to connect with each and every data node individually. The arrow marks that I have shown here that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 does not mean that he is actually connecting with each and every data node. No, this is how, this is not how it looks for Sai. For Sai, it looks as if he is connecting to only one data node. Internally, the data Hadoop actually manages the connection between Sai and the data nodes. This would take care as if, see, for Sai, it would be like he is connecting to only one data node. But internally, what happens? He is connecting to multiple data nodes. Okay? So this is how the whole thing works together. The name node's duty is only to give these guys, give the client a list as to which data node is free and which you can use for loading data. That's all. The, the purpose of name node is only to give him the list and that is it. Nothing else does the name node do. Now you might ask me, how does the name node know which is free and which is not? Let me draw the same diagram again. When client asks the name node as to I want to store this much of data, give me the list, then the name node gives the list to the client. But how does the name node know how much of each place is there in each and every data node? For every three second interval, 
Right, that is the default value. You can configure it. If you if you wanted to make 10 seconds, you can make it 10 seconds. All the slaves, or rather all the data nodes, ping them to the name node saying that I am alive, I am alive, I am alive, I am alive. So this happens for every three second interval. And this we call it the heartbeat. This we call it the heartbeats. So all the data nodes interact with the name node two heartbeats, saying that I am alive, I am still in the system, I am still in the system. Now, most of the times, heartbeats couple themselves as messaging medium. So along with the heartbeats, what these data nodes do is that they send certain valuable information, like free space and its system health. 